Okay, so what you don't know is all of my slides are white. So we're just going to sit here for five minutes and stare at each other awkwardly. Invisible ink. Invisible ink, yes. So my name is Tom Duffield, and I work for Chef. And I'm going to give you 10 quick tips that you can use to improve your Chef workflow. Um, full, full disclosure, I did not write this talk. I'm giving it for someone else. So if you have complaints, direct it towards them. So the first one is use the Chef DK. The Chef DK is an all-in-one bundle that you can install on your workstation to get started using Chef. Uh, it runs on pretty much every operating system under the sun, for the, or every desktop operating system under the sun. And what it does is it avoids the, what I like to call, the bundle file from hell. So if you've ever tried to set up a workstation, you know you have like a, a gem file that's like a million lines long, and at least 50 of those are caused unhappiness. So specifically with the Windows workstation, you want to install Chocolaty, ConyMU, and PS Readline. So for those of you who don't know, Chocolaty is a package manager for Windows, much like Homebrew or Apt or uh, Yum. ConyMU is a console emulator that you can use as an alternative to uh, like your native console. And you want PS Readline. Also, get a good text editor. Friends, don't let friends use Notepad or Microsoft Word. Not good. I've seen that. So uh, server spec, for those of you who are doing uh, testing using uh, chef spec or test kitchen, having a spec underscore helper file allows you to kind of manage all of your shared settings, and that kind of cleans up your tests. So if you have, some, if you have a consistent value that's going to be across all of your tests, rather than putting that in every single test, you can put it in your spec helper. You can also put fixtures in your data path. Mixlib shellout. So if you are if you use back tips back ticks in your recipes, use this instead. Um, shell underscore out and shell underscore out bang are now part of the core Chef DSL as part of Chef 12, which means you can run sh uh, shell shell our command outputs, grab the output from that, and use that. So no more back ticks, please. Okay. So the other thing. Make sure that you record while you learn. So either take notes, or even better, if you're screen sharing, or get like a screen recorder, and as you're learning or as you're teaching someone, record that so that you can go back and use it. Or as you ideally bring on people to your team because you're expanding, they can reference those uh, screencasts rather than you having to explain it over again uh, for the hundredth time, because hopefully your team is growing really fast. Um, Pre-baked VMs or containers. So what this means is rather than starting, like spinning up a cloud instance, installing everything from uh, scratch, take the, uh, create a image that has all of the heavy lifting already done. So like all of the binaries downloaded, all of the, uh, all of the things installed, all of those time consuming bits and just do them ahead of time and then start it up and run Chef again when you want to launch it for real and just do that last mile configuration. Uh, troubleshooting with Pry. So if you've ever uh, seen an output of a chef run and you're like, hmm, that's interesting. Why did it do that? I've never seen it do that before. Um, you can use Pry, which is a Ruby gem that allows you to essentially stop a chef run like in the middle of it. And you can look around and like run Ruby commands and stuff to actually figure out why it's all of a sudden executing Java code or something. Uh, using run state to store data. So if there's data that you want to store temporarily in your node state, but you don't actually want that data to go to your chef server, you can store it in the run state. And this allows you to just, like if you want to create some data in one recipe and then reference it in another, but you don't want that data to live forever in the cloud, you can uh, just put it in the, the run state and there's a little URL to help you do that. So coerce everything instead of checking for nil. Um, this one's a little interesting. It's a little opinionated. I don't know if I personally agree with it, but uh, it's on the slide, so I have to read it. And it's essentially, uh, oh, it's not on the slides anymore. Cool. Um, <laughs> and this one is by uh, Matt Stratton, and that is pimp out your text editor, uh, which basically means make sure that it's not uh, notepad. Um, 
project drawers, plugins, themes, all of that stuff is really important. You stare at this thing for six to seven hours a day. Make sure that you enjoy staring at it. So that's it for me. Once again, my name is Tom Duffield. If you want to complain about these uh, tips, you can find me at the chef booth, and I will sit there and listen and then forward them all to Sean Carolyn, who wrote this thing. <laughs> <laughs>